Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean, and today we got to talk about more consequences of the George Floyd event in Minneapolis, Minnesota, because the Hennepin County District Attorney actually had a case where two people were involved in a carjacking murder. Both of them fired shots on the victim. However, one suspect, who was a Native American, was given no jail time in addition to their time served, while the other suspect, who was a white male, was given 20 years. And guess what? It turns out that the guy who got the slap on the wrist was the ringleader in this criminality. He was the problem, and he continues to reoffend now that he's gotten a free pass from this woke George Soros funded district attorney. And that's what we're going to talk about today the injustice in the original crime and the ongoing victimization that people in and around this area have to suffer from due to the fact that this woke district attorney doesn't want to prosecute non whites for anything. Now, we're going to get into this, but before we do, I want to thank everybody who supports this channel via actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money, okay? Also tonight, a plea deal that prosecutors are offering a young defendant involved in a deadly carjacking has that victim's family enraged tonight. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office is offering probation to a 20-year-old involved in that crime. So this segment is from well over a year ago, and it talks about a man called Hussein Braveheart. I am William Wallace. Who is of Native American descent, and that is absolutely crucial for you guys to understand. And he and another teenager were involved in a carjacking gone wrong that turned into a murder. And what we're seeing right here is the original news reports when it was announced that this guy would get a plea deal that would essentially let him out. He was able to plead down to assault, even though, again, he fired shots on the victim who ultimately ended up dying due to gunshot wounds. This case involves a defendant by the name of Hussein Braveheart. William Wallace is seven feet tall. Yes, he is now 20 years old. In 2019, Braveheart was just shy of his 16th birthday when he was involved in a deadly carjacking with a teen co-defendant by the name of Jared Oseman in Northeast Minneapolis. The pair admitted they were attempting to rob Stephen Markey and steal his car. While both young men fired, it was Oseman's bullet that killed the 39-year-old. Oseman subsequently pleaded guilty to second-degree murder in adult court and was sentenced to nearly 22 years in prison. So right there, you just got a breakdown of the events that took place in this particular case. And I know that they make the point that Oseman's bullet is the one that ultimately struck Marquis and killed him during this carjacking. But the fact of the matter is, that makes absolutely no difference at all whatsoever because of a law that we have in this country called felony murder, which essentially says that if somebody is killed during the commission of a crime, then everybody gets tagged with that murder charge. Now, of course, in this particular case, they describe the Native American Braveheart as 15 years old, just shy of his 16th birthday, and Osman was actually 16 years old. But to be 100% clear, in a 4-1 to -one decision, the Minnesota Supreme Court actually ruled that Braveheart could be tried as an adult. So yes, the same charges can can apply in this particular circumstance. And while there are a great number of very questionable felony murder cases, this is not one of them. This is, in fact, exactly why you have the felony murder charges, because what you need in order to convict somebody is mens rea, which is evil intention, and actus rea, which is evil acts. Both of these people participated in a carjacking. Both of these people decided to shoot at a fleeing driver, and the fact that one bullet was responsible for one one of these individuals for the kill makes no matter in terms of the potential felony murder charges. And by the way, this was charged and fought out in the courts in order to be actually adjudicated to the point where both of them could be charged and convicted with that homicide. But what ended up happening was in January of 2023, Mary Moriarty, a career public defender, somebody who was so woke, she was actually kicked out of the public defender's office for mixed conduct, was elected as the Hennepin County District Attorney, so she offered this plea deal to Braveheart, and of course, this was done in large part due to the fact that he is Native American and thus a victim of evil white racism and colonialism. The victim in this actual case, Mr. Marquis, who died because of these teenagers decided to shoot at him, he doesn't matter. He doesn't exist at all whatsoever. We have to protect this Native American boy because he's such a sweet, innocent angel. And by the way, I will prove to you throughout the course of this video that had it not been for Braveheart, this carjacking would have never occurred. There is nothing I can do 
to take back what I've done. I would like the court to know I'm sorry for what I've done. So right there, that is Oshman, and he ended up getting sentenced to 20 years for his role in this murder. And let me be 100% clear about this. Even though he showed remorse right there, even though you can hear it in his voice, I do not believe that this kid should skate on anything. He, along with his buddy, fired bullets at somebody who they were attempting to rob, who they were attempting to carjack, and that man is dead. The family will never be able to see their loved one ever again because of the actions of these two killers. But what I'm trying to highlight is the double standard, is the fact that this is the same crime, not two different sets of circumstances. These are identical circumstances. We have legal precedent in order to charge both of them with the homicide, and the more active participant in this crime was in fact brave heart yet he got a slap on the wrist he was allowed to plead out and get out of prison scot-free hussein braveheart meanwhile has had his case ping pong between juvenile and adult court the state supreme court eventually signing off on his adult certification he has been locked up for some four years now completing a couple different treatment programs the head of the county attorney's office believes braveheart has shown strong progress towards rehabilitation and they have made him an offer plead guilty to aiding and abetting second degree murder in exchange, he'll get five years of probation with the very same 21-plus-year prison sentence Oseman got hanging over his head. Meaning if Braveheart stays out of trouble, he won't go to prison. Yeah, that's right. So this guy gets a plea deal for aiding and abetting second degree murder, no felony murder charges. But more importantly, as a condition of this plea deal, Moriarty says you don't have to serve a day in jail. Now it's a suspended sentence, so theoretically you could serve prison time if you continue to reoffend. However, we are going to show you throughout the course of this video that this guy did in fact reoffend. He is committing crimes, he's committing the same crime crimes because of course this guy was a problem from the jump and the criminal history of Braveheart was very indicative of this fact but that's the offer that he got the ringleader in this carjacking churned homicide was able to skate scot-free because of course he's a Native American so he's an innocent angel Aladdin and we have a woke prosecutor who came into office that thinks that this guy is the victim and honestly he was just taking back what was once stolen from him from Marquis and maybe just just maybe Marquis deserved to be shot for his trouble. A deal Marquis' family finds incomprehensible. It's an insult to my son, but that's not the point. My son is gone. Nothing brings him back. But it's also a danger to everyone who lives in Hennepin County. So what this guy said is 100% true. It is, in fact, a danger to everyone who lives in Hennepin County. And that's not just based off of this individual incident that maybe you will say is one crime that got out of hand. It's based on the repeated criminal history before this and the continuing ongoing criminal history post this. But we're going to hear from this woke prosecutor, this person who cut this killer a sweetheart deal because she has her own thoughts on this situation and I want to play that for you. He has successfully completed two residential treatment programs. He's made significant progress, uh, very significant progress. Um, and so sending him to prison, uh, based on everything we know, will create more trauma um, and make him likely to be more dangerous when he gets out. So right there, you hear the woke district attorney saying, hey, listen, this kid, such a good boy, such an innocent angel, Aladdin, didn't do nothing wrong. And look at all these different various programs that he completed that show that he's rehabilitated. Now, I find it quite interesting that the other person post being convicted post being sentenced gave a heartfelt apology now I'm not asking for mercy for him what I'm asking for is equal treatment for Braveheart but we don't have any corresponding audio or video of this guy saying oh he's so sorry or anything like that because the fact of the matter is he just isn't sorry the fact of the matter is he is 100% guilty of this crime he should have suffered the consequences for it and this idea that you're gonna let this killer out because if you were to hold him for 20 years, just like the other kid, he might, after 20 years, reoffend is absurd in every possible way. Because guess what? He has already reoffended. He has already committed the same exact crime. He hasn't actually killed somebody this time, but he's back to stealing cars. But the crazy thing is, we knew all of this was the case back then, a year ago, when he got this sweetheart deal. When he was let out, we knew of his criminal history. We knew of his pattern of behavior and it should have been surprising to no one that it ultimately ended up leading to the death of someone that deal must still be approved by a judge a plea hearing set for friday afternoon in addition to five years of probation the plea agreement calls for up to one year in the workhouse as a sort of transition for hussein braveheart 
back into society. And Stephen Markey's family has said they plan to be in that courtroom on Friday speaking against this plea agreement and hoping the judge rejects it. Yeah, so the family said that they were going to go to the courtroom, they were going to speak against it, but the fact of the matter is, when the prosecutor is acting as a second defense attorney, you have virtually no chance in front of the judge. So, he got the light sentence, he was released, he got the weak probation, and all of that, and what were the results of that? Well, we're going to get into that a little bit later, but I also want to show you guys what his criminal history was before this, the charges that were re-brought post the murder charges being completely thrown away because people wanted to get him on something, just so you have an idea of his history, of his pattern of behavior, and you can understand why this guy was 100% the ringleader in this crime that turned into a homicide. Good morning, Alex. Yeah, this is the same suspect, by the way, that put Hennepin County Attorney Mary Moriarty under a microscope after she agreed to a controversial plea deal that kept that teenager out of prison. This morning, though, Hussein Braveheart remains in custody. He'll be facing new charges for two armed robberies that happened just days before the deadly carjacking back in 2019. Braveheart was one of two teens arrested for killing Steve Markey during a botched robbery, but the family of the victim was stunned when prosecutors offered to drop the charge of second-degree murder down to simple attempted assault. Yeah, that's right. Braveheart, the guy who got the sweetheart deal, had multiple different other armed robbery charges that were pending when he received that deal. These crimes were committed in the lead up to this carjacking turned into a homicide, and it's just supposed to be accepted that it was perfectly normal for him to get the sweetheart deal, while the other person, who pled guilty by the way, received a 20-year sentence for that guilty plea. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that amazing? One kid who ends up going through the Supreme Court system, being ruled that it is perfectly acceptable to charge him as an adult because he was just days away from his 16th birthday, and another kid who was 16 get completely different plea deals for the same crime. And again, I know a lot of people are harping on the distinction that it was the bullet from Osman that ultimately ended up leading to his death, but under the law, when you charge felony murder, if you actually cared about getting justice for the family, that would make no matter. And in these particular armed robberies, cases, Braveheart acted on his own. He roped in the other kid for the carjacking got wrong. They both actually pulled the trigger on the person that was fleeing, and that led to Marquis' death. So both of them, in my mind, are just as guilty, and it turns out Braveheart has a lengthier criminal history. But guess what? He got a slap on the wrist for these charges as well. Last week, a judge accepted Hussein Braveheart's guilty plea for his role in that case. Now, in exchange, he was given 54 months. That was his sentence. He was credited, though, for his time served, so Braveheart has essentially already completed that sentence. But according to new charging documents, he was also one of two teens who robbed a woman at gunpoint, demanding her keys and phone. They drove over her phone as they sped away. Less than two hours later, that same night, the pair stole another car after robbing a man of his keys, wallet, and phone, demanding that he empty his pockets and threatened to shoot him in the head. Now, Braveheart, of course, got a sweetheart deal for those two other armed robbery charges because, of course, he did. And if you're upset about that, I just want to say, don't worry about it because according to the sentencing report that was put together by Moriarty, who's supposed to be the district attorney representing the people, representing the families, the victims of these cases, he was an innocent angel Aladdin who's just a 15 year old homeless youth that was trying to feed himself because he was starving and now he's a 20 year old that is managing his PTSD and coping with all the different bad things that happened to him because you know when you point guns at people's faces multiple times threaten to kill them actually fire upon somebody who tries to resist your carjacking and then they die that's very traumatic for you for you, the murderer in that case, it's it's very traumatic, and he's dealing with that, so I'm sure he'll be perfectly fine. Except we know it's not fine, we know it's not acceptable, because he was arrested again for being in a stolen car, fleeing law enforcement, all the same things that he did before, and who is surprised but Moriarty? Well, Hussein Braveheart, a man who took a controversial plea deal for a deadly carjacking, is now accused of driving more than 100 miles an hour while fleeing police in a stolen vehicle. Now, this is really pissing me off for a multitude of reasons. And first and foremost is the fact that Moriarty's election, all this woke reform in the city of Minneapolis, is all happening because George Floyd died. 
died. So I will ask the question again. Is George Floyd avenged? You have Marquis who was killed. This guy got a slap on the wrist again because of a woke prosecutor that was elected in the wake of that. He ends up getting a slap on the wrist, steals another car, and while fleeing police is driving 100 miles an hour. If you would have hit somebody and killed them, would you then have said, oh, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, it's not worth it to avenge George Floyd in this way. Or are you going to draw the line here? Are you going to say enough is enough and this guy needs to go back to prison? Let me know when it's enough let me know when the vengeance has been served related to the george floyd incident i'm still waiting for things to go back to normal but of course they never will as long as you have the, these people in power again a prosecutor that was too woke that was too unprofessional to be in the public defender's office is now the district attorney but this is a case that is of course renewed criticism for hennepin county attorney mary moriarty who defended brave hearts at leniency saying he'd completed residential treatment programs Programs, but sharp criticism again today, including from the uh, Minnesota Police and Peace Officers Association, saying that there must be real co consequences for violent offenders. And they describe her as defending Braveheart, which is true, she did do that, but need I remind you that she's the damn prosecutor. I don't think anyone was surprised by this, except maybe the Hennepin County attorney. Kristen Daristory said she cried when she learned Hussein Braveheart had been arrested again in a stolen vehicle after fleeing police at more than 100 miles an hour. I think most people, including my family, were waiting for him to reoffend and just hoping that it wouldn't be serious and cause another loss of life. Five years ago, Kristen's cousin, Stephen Markey, was killed during an attempted carjacking in Minneapolis. So here you have a member of the Markey family, and honestly, she hits the nail right on the head. Nobody is surprised about this, except, of course, for the Hennepin County District Attorney, who doesn't give a damn about the victims. And, of course, she describes that she was brought to tears when she found out that this guy was at it again, that he could have killed somebody, because this family fought tooth and nail in order to prevent that plea deal from going through. But the fact of the matter is, when you have no prosecutor you have two defense attorneys and this person is probably worse more of a public defender than the guy's actual defense attorney this is the result so of course she wants consequences and by the way i know this is a downer story but trust me there might actually be some good news in this case we'll get to that in a little bit when braveheart and another man jared osmond both shot at marky as he tried to drive away osmond got 20 years in prison because prosecutors said it was his bullet that killed marky I apologize for not being a better person that day. So I love that you heard that right there. This guy's non-apology. This is supposedly the reform guy in comparison to Osmond's apology. He just says, I'm sorry I wasn't a better person that day. What the hell are you talking about? You're a horrible person. You killed someone. You have a history of armed robberies. And you give that lukewarm apology as you get the red carpet rolled out for you. A sweetheart deal. And this write-up about how you're just an innocent baby homeless person that is dealing with the post-traumatic stress of somebody getting killed, you know, the person that you fired shots at and tried to murder. You can see it coming, right? We knew he would get in trouble again. It's The odds were in his favor of doing that, even though you'd hope for something else. Braveheart was arrested early Sunday by Egan PD and charged with fleeing police, a felony. Kristen hopes Dakota County will bring a different outcome, and this time a far stiffer punishment. It was uniquely painful to find out what happened, but I'm also really relieved that no one else was injured as a result of his crimes this time. So you could just hear the heartbreak. You can see it on her face, for those of you who are not listening via podcast, of this woman who lost her cousin in an absolutely senseless crime, and the fact that the man, one of whom was responsible for this crime, was let off with a slap on the wrist. But if you listen carefully to that whole section of the segment, you might have heard the good news in this particular story, and that is that this guy was arrested by police that are in a different jurisdiction, Dakota County, in instead of Hennepin County, so the chances of some actual consequences being inflicted on this criminal, this repeat offender, this thug, this violent, horrible, disgusting person that is portrayed as a victim in Hennepin County, when in reality, he's a predator, he's a perpetrator, should be severe in this particular case. He should be held accountable now that it's out of the hands of Moriarty, who, by the way, released an absurdly simplistic statement related to this result 
assault, even though she bears the responsibility for this crime. And again, this guy wasn't even out for a full year before he reoffended in the same exact way. He was in a stolen vehicle. Now, as of right now, he's not been charged with the theft. And we know in Minnesota, there's issues with that because unless you can prove somebody actually stole the car, like you had somebody see it happen or something like that, you can't actually make those charges. We learned that from another police department, which was actually the Minneapolis Police Department when they explained that. But that is just as serious a charge as actually stealing the vehicle. And he led police on this dangerous pursuit. He could have killed somebody once again. But again, we have a chance of some damn consequences because it's Dakota County rather than Hennepin County. Reaction from the Hennepin County Attorney's Office today in a very short statement saying that we are aware of the situation in Dakota County. If the allegations are true, Mr. Braveheart will be held accountable. And that right there is another FU from the Hennepin County District Attorney's Office. They release a one sentence statement where they say, if true, uh, he will be held accountable. Now, that actually might be the case because the Dakota County District Attorney might actually hold them accountable. Unlike Hennepin County, that would probably give him a Another slap on the wrist, probably write him up a nice report about how he has PTSD from stealing that car from whoever he stole it from. And honestly, he's an innocent angel victim of society. But yeah, maybe there will be some accountability in this particular case, but it has absolutely nothing to do with Mary Moriarty or the Hennepin County District Attorney's Office. Now, look, I gave you a lot of information throughout the course of this video, but I really want to know what you guys think about this down in the comments below. If you like the video, then show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about the absolute double standard and the consequences of letting a killer off scot-free till next time